raising up leaders sounds cool. Yeah. It sounds great, but but it's painful. And so I would say one of the things I, I'm learning, I would encourage you guys to learn, church planters, mm-hmm. is learn how to forgive hurt, to walk through true forgiveness, not hold on to it, let it turn into bitterness, where you end up stepping out and saying, I have to get away uh-huh. from this because I'm too hurt. Family, multiplication, restoration. I'm Dahadi Lewis. Join me, Noah Odom and Hayden Radden, as we come to you from Atlanta, St. Louis, and Las Vegas, as we seek to add value to your church planning journey. We'll have real-time, authentic conversations that are relevant to the life of the church planner and pastor. Join us as we hear from leaders of this movement from across North America and discover what it really takes to plant churches everywhere for everyone. The world tells us our differences should divide us. But the gospel, it has a different story. Our mission, our calling, His command is a mission that unites every Christ follower in a way that stands out, a way that doesn't make sense to the world. Join us June 13th and 14th at SEND Conference to be refreshed and celebrate the church together on mission. A free event hosted by the International Mission Board and North American Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. Learn more at SendConference.com. Welcome to another episode of the We Are Send Network podcast. My name is Noah Oldham, lead pastor of August Gate in St. Louis, joined today by Hayden Ratner, the senior pastor of Walk Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. What's up, brother? How you feeling? Hey, hey, I'm doing good. I'm glad to be on the podcast today. There's always room to get better, right? So let's go ahead and lean in today. Pray that church planters and team members would be edified and strengthened by this podcast. Let's get it. Let's do it. Well, hey, today we have a cool opportunity. A young dude named Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves, who's down in North Carolina. He's a seminary student at Southeastern Seminary. He has a desire once he graduates with his MDiv to join us in the work of planting churches all across North America. And he wrote in and said, hey, I got a question I'd love for you guys to tackle uh, to help me with as I'm preparing uh, for this call for church planting. And here's his question he wants us to tackle today. And we're going to tackle it in a two by three format. So each of us offering three answers to this question. He said, what is the hardest and most challenging thing about starting a church plant? And Mm. what do you still deal with today? So we're going to talk about the difficulties in church planting, what was the hardest part about starting, and what continues maybe to be difficult even all of these years in. Hayden, I'd love for you to start us off, man. What's uh, what's your number one? Man, I think one of the, the the number one thing that comes to me, and of course, in true church planter style, in true preacher style, come on, in true Baptist style, I'm gonna do some <laughs> alliteration, right? I'm 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 rocking oh, some T's. <laughs> today. And the first one that comes to my mind is team management, Mm. Uh, team management. Church planting is all about teamwork. First off, if you don't intend to have a team in planting a church, it's not for you. Talk about working harder, not smarter. You're going to need a team. But sometimes it's like that African proverb, right? It's, It's faster to run alone, but you go further when you run together. And I just want to say mm-hmm. that the the idea of team management um, just was hard for me as a new church planter, a new pastor, um, learning how to deal with people and manage people and help people win and help people find their lanes was a task for me. And so I had to realize early on, not everybody has the same personality as me. Not everybody has the same gift sets as my wife. Not everybody has the same drive. Not everybody has the even same level of ownership from the jump. And so yeah. trying to yeah. discern, okay, this person has a, a calling to our church and in our city and to us and is good intended, but they might not be able to do the same thing as this person. And this person has uh, triggers if these things are said, and this this person doesn't want to touch kids' ministry, well, this person only wants to do kids' ministry. Yeah. <laughs> this person <laughs> wants to do worship, yeah. but doesn't want to pick up a chair or set up a mic, you know? And so I think team mm-hmm. management was one of the most challenging things early on. It's still challenging today, five years in, but I feel like yeah. I just I'm able yeah. to read people better. And at first, I just didn't have that same gift set that I needed to be able to discern how to manage and lead and pastor 
people on our team, it was kind of just like, hey, everybody, let's just pick up and go and run. And the Holy Spirit was like, yeah, you need to be a, a shepherd to the people that you're leading and help put them in the right positions That's to good. win. So team management is first mm -hmm. for me. How about you, Noah? What's your first? Yeah, man, number one for me is uh, measuring success. Mm. Measuring success. I, I'm a, I was an athlete in high school and college all through growing up. And then you get into ministry and and it's, success is different. It's just a different thing altogether. And so when I think about this, I also think about that, that word faithfulness, how to even measure faithfulness. I remember early on Good. in church planning, I go to all these conferences before I planted, even right after I planted. And all the guys on stage were saying the same thing. They were saying something along the lines of don't do it like me. Uh, do this well, but don't do it like me. I, I, I've done it too fast, too hard. I'm going to burn out. I have burned out, whatever it might be. But they were the one on stage. They were the one who had been deemed successful enough to speak to all of us about church planning. And then they said, but don't do it like me. And it left me in this place of like, okay, I think I hear what they're saying. They're telling everybody else, don't do it like you. But if I want to be where you're at, if I want to lead, then I have to do it at least something like you. And so it left me in this confused state of how do I actually do it and what is success? Um, we, we then tell people, uh, we think about the parable of the talents. And the parable of the talents is this concept right. of, you know, you got five talents, two talents, one talent, the master gives them and goes away and says, manage my resources. Well, we tell somebody, hey, don't try to be a five talent guy if you're just a two talent guy. If the Lord's given you two, just be faithful. And I get that. And, and I want to believe that. And I want to receive that. But then I begin to ask, but what if I am a five talent guy and I'm only being faithful with two? And I, he wants me to be faithful with the three other wow. he's, he's given me. And so I did, I've always Good. kind of just struggled in this place of how do I measure success? And so what it takes, I, for me at least, it's taken a, a daily walk with the Lord. Have I been faithful today? Have I taken every opportunity today? Am I falling into rhythms of, of workaholism? Or am I falling into rhythms of apathy and laziness? How do I keep a humble hunger Good. alive in my life? And so measuring success, learning to do that. But I would say, Hayden, your number one adds to my number one because I found best to do this within the context of a team. My wife being part Great. of the team. And then the other leaders in my church, they're able to speak in and say, hey, this is success. This is faithfulness. And it helps to keep me grounded. Yeah, man. That's number Man. one. All right. What's number two for word. you, Hayden? Yeah, I love that phrase, humble hunger. I'm going to use that, bro. <laughs> that might need to be a shirt or something. Let's um, do it. Number two for me, the first one was team management. The second one is time management. Uh, for me personally, time management um, has been a challenge in the church planting journey. Um, when it comes to what to do, as the lead church planter, there's so much, so, so many different lanes to travel yeah. on when it comes to spending your time. I like what Ephesians 5, 16 says. It says, because the days are evil, make the best use of your time. And that's been hard for me to discern. You know, I, I listen to certain guys and they say, man, you need to be spending 20 hours a week on sermon prep. Then there's other guys that are saying, hey, you know what? Do your best with the sermon. Make sure you're reaching lost people. Get in the city. <laughs> yeah. Serve homeless people. Rub shoulders. Yeah. Reach the lost. You know, work hard. And then there's other people that are saying, no, no, no. The primary calling is leadership development. Serve your team. Raise them up. Lead your team. Spend all your time with your team to help them. And I'm like, dang, yeah. well, you know, there's only so much time as a husband and dad first. Which Where, where do I give that primary focus and energy in that time management. I found that there's been many weeks that I'm getting to Friday and I haven't even touched mm. my sermon. And that wow. caused struggle for me, especially early on with my family, because my wife knows when it's Saturday and I'm thinking about it still. And that's supposed to be a rest day for us. Right. Or it's like, man, mm. I'm sending stuff into our team really last minute and late. And so time management, I had to uh, rearrange some stuff to make sure that during the week I'm sitting down to get this sermon done, or yeah. I'm prioritizing these meetings to lead with my team. And how about this topic? Prayer, right? We can get so busy yeah. into the work that we don't even create space and time to do the most important work, which is the work of prayer. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. I think that that 
I didn't early on, I didn't have good time blocking skills. So time management, I felt like was always away from me. I felt like I was getting to the week and always behind. And so I had to change some stuff up before it changed me up and my family up. And so team management, <laughs> that's right. time management, those were two of the hardest things. They're still challenging, but we're getting a better grip on them. And that could save you, church planter and team member, a lot of struggle and stress if you can get your time situated in the right way. Mm, man, and those two things together, Hyden, I think are really important, is you got to figure out time management first. What are the things you have to do? Good. And then you can begin to manage that team around that schedule. Great. Okay, now I got to manage this team. I need to build a team that actually helps me function within my God-given and God-called roles. Now my team can then fill in the gaps. And I think so many times, because we want to be servant leaders, which we should be, right. that we often end up serving everybody else in these calls that sometimes don't exist if the lead pastor's role isn't going well. Correct. I, if we don't, ha if you're not preaching that sermon, if you're not leading the leaders, if you're not able to manage all of that, then some of these peripheral things don't even matter. And so, getting that's those right. straight, man, that's so good. Time management, team management, love it. Good, man. Uh, number two for me. Um, and just something I've been dwelling on lately and thinking about is, is I read a lot and I, I, I serve senior director over deploy at send networks. I'm dealing with planters all the time and their, and their personal situations are going on. Number two for me, you've got to learn. It was really hard early on. It's been hard. I'm 12 years in still hard. It's forgiving hurt, forgiving ah. hurt. Um, you know, there's hashtags, hashtag church hurt and, and things that happen within the church. But I think we often forget that pastors and planters, they're a part of the church too. And what I am learning right. is more often than not, we are involved with more hurtful situations than anyone else ever could dream about. And so if five people in the church have different situations where there's hurt involved, interpersonal conflict, the pastor often gets pulled in or is in the center of all of those and sometimes at the same time. And uh, I man, just recently sitting down with one of my team members because, man, someone in a church ha has sinned against me. Um, and just me having to deal with like the hurt of that, the ongoing, knowing the gossip is happening and the reputation slandering is happening and just, oh, how do we move forward from this? And, and how do I forgive and how do I care for them well? And um, man, that's big. And I think a lot of pastors don't deal with their emotional health needs because they don't realize that it's okay to feel hurt and to have to walk through the process of forgiveness. Because here's the deal. Um, reaching the lost, reaching the unchurched, reaching the de-church is what we, we love to do as church planters. That's a specific call. I want to reach these people who right. are de-churched. But man, when you reach them, they got baggage and, and, and they're not mature believers and they are going to bite. The sheep have teeth. And when they do, they're often not mature enough to walk through the process of reconciliation and forgiveness and all that goes along with it. And so raising up leaders sounds cool. Yeah. It sounds great, but but it's painful. And so I would say one of the things I, I'm learning, I would encourage you guys to learn, church planters, mm -hmm. is learn how to forgive hurt, to walk through true forgiveness, not hold on to it, let it turn into bitterness, where you end up stepping out and saying, I have to get away uh, from this because I'm too hurt. Watch out for your family too. My wife is a PK pastor's kid. And then she married a pastor. So she's a PK and she's a PW and she's in ministry her whole life. And um, she's just been on wow. the receiving end of a lot of hurt. And so got to deal with it. Yeah. Got to learn. Yeah. Man, that's tough. And such a real word that that'll zap a, a planter's joy and energy. Yeah. And um, I think that's such a real word. And I, I feel you on that. Noah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, dude. I know my my final um, one that has just been challenging throughout the church planning journey, one of the hardest things, as Brother Austin wrote in, um, is that third T, and that's treasure management. Mm. Treasure management. So we talked about team, talked about time, talked about treasure now. You know, I know as a church planter, one of the things that can just consume you is this idea of money. I need to raise money. I need to have dollars. I need to have bread, you know, to be able to make this dream come alive. And so between partnership development, trying to tap all the different wells you can tap, <laughs> between trying to 
figure out what you're able to do within your convention or between Send Network, things like that. Uh, we can get so consumed and so worried about, man, what what are we, how, where are we going to get the money to plant this church? Yeah. That, you know, I think there's times where I've, I've had to forget, where I needed to remember Matthew 18, where Jesus says, I'll build my church. Like, yeah. stop worrying about the money. That's what I do. I love what David says in one of those Psalms where he says, uh, God says, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. It's all his. And so I know that that sounds good to hear, but friend, you need to hear it again. That You don't have to worry about the money component as a primary source that you're going to bring in for your church. Uh, I love this quote, where God guides, God provides. God's guided mm -hmm. you and your spouse or just you and your team, if you're single, to plant a church in a city, in a context. God's going to provide everything that that church needs. I once heard somebody say, if you yeah. take care of your bride, Jesus will take care of his. Let me give you one more quote. Oh, yeah. Come on. If it's <laughs> God's on. will, it's God's bill. And so he's oh, got to pay for it. Come on, right? He's going to do that. And so I just want to say that to somebody who's listening to this, watching this right now, and you're stressed out about finances and partnership development. Yeah. Do your best, uh, honor and serve well, and make sure that you're hitting the road and trying to make sure you're doing your thing as you can, whether it's an email, updates. Um, and even that can be challenging, right? You're yeah. like, man, I got to find time to do these MailChimp updates to all my partners and make sure I get them right and they look good. Those things I know early on for us just became weighty. And then it was like internally, what do we, we need to get a system in place and we need to have a numbers guy and we need to have a clear system to have financial integrity and accountability. And that was new for us. Now we're trying to make sure how are we are we making is our systems clean and secure when it comes to finances do we have a count team in place on Sunday and then a second count team on Monday and so we just had to get all that situated we didn't know what we didn't know and so we're grateful for our sending yeah. church hope church who helped us in a lot of areas and so don't try to operate alone the proverb says success happens in abundance of counsel but those are my three that when I think about these three, I start getting a little bit mm. anxious because they had that big of an effect on me. Team management, time management, treasure yeah. management. But those are three that that the Lord will he'll equip in the life of your church. If you can mm -hmm. endure, you can do it. He can do it. Noah. Love it. Talk to me about the third. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I think number three wraps us up really well today. Uh, for me, the the third hardest thing to learn in church planning, continue to struggle with today, but fight for all the time, is not compromising the vision. Uh. Not compromising the vision. Man, early on, you're going to have opportunities to compromise the vision all the time. You can pick up another partner. You can pick up a team member. You can pick up another leader if you'll just compromise the vision a little bit. I remember early on, we were uh, in our local area. We we're looking for a place to meet, and there was a church that had gotten uh, a building in that neighborhood, just kind of bequeathed to them, you know, through, through some, somebody died and they, they handed over the building uh, to them. And they said, Hey, well, we're going to start a campus down there uh, in this area. Now we, we were just coming in to plant this church in that same kind of general area. And we approached them about sharing space. We'll rent from you on Sunday nights. And they approached me and said, Hey, how about you guys don't plant? You just become our campus. You can be the campus pastor. You can take our name. You can have these people and these resources. And man, there was money. There was people, all the things we thought we needed. And we just had to say no. And I remember a local church planting leader wow. actually said that I was an idiot because he's like, he, they got people, they got money, they got, they got all this they want to give you, but you just want to do it alone. And I said, no, 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 no. I don't want to do it alone. I want to do what God called me to do. It would be a sin for me to Good. compromise the vision for the sake of people and money. I don't need more Christians and I don't need more money. I need to go reach the lost according to the parameters that God set for me. So um, that was an easy one. That was an easy one to highlight. But man, brother, if we're honest, every step of the way, there's these opportunities. Somebody says, hey, I want to come join this church. I'm a seasoned leader moving into the city. But I think you need to do this, this, and this differently. We need to shift the focus. Um, small groups are really, really hard. We call it an experiment in biblical community. And throughout the years, people challenge and push back. And we should do this, and we should do this, and we should do this. And we said, no, like the vision of the church is to be disciples and make disciples. We cannot negotiate this part of who we are. 
Planting churches is a part of our DNA. And brother, it's hard to plant churches. You know this, to send out people and send out resources. And man, it gets easier and easier to be like, hey, maybe we should just chill for a while because this is this is a lot mm. and, and we're tired and the vision accomplishing the vision sometimes takes a lot of effort. And, uh, we're in a season now, 12 years in where we're getting ready to send out another church planter from our team. It's been on our team for the last five years Love it. and it would be easy to sit back and say, you know what, let's just grow this thing. Let's just shift for a while. Then maybe we can shift back. But God has just, again, burdened me. Don't compromise the vision. And as you've talked about, as, as he's guided, he will provide. If he he's the guide, he'll provide. Uh, if it's his will, he's got the bill. I think it's it's all of that. I think when we begin to step outside of that vision, though, I don't know that his hand uh, of favor and promise is there with us anymore. And so wow. planter, Man. pastor, don't compromise the vision. Hold fast to it, knowing that he's faithful and he will accomplish what he has set to accomplish in you and through you. So good. That's my three. That's my three. Uh, and and you know, I hope it's been encouraging. Um, man, I, and I always love listening to you uh, on these podcasts. You get a little bit of time to do your mini sermonettes. Uh, it makes me want to tune in to Walk <laughs> Church today and, and listen to some recent sermons, man. Oh, man. You get going. Come on. You get going. But hey, uh, man, brother, thankful for this time you, with you, brother. Thankful for this time, and, and I pray it's going to be helpful for planters. For Austin, brother, praying for you today, and for all of, of those Austins yeah. that are out there. I believe we got we got people in seminaries, people in ministry positions that God is churning on their hearts to go plant a church, and they just right. need a little bit of a push and encouragement in the right direction. So consider this an encouragement in that direction for all you who are listening. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for listening. Um, if you would go ahead and subscribe and share this podcast with everybody, you know, we want to help our network level up. We want to grow this network and see churches planted all over North America. Uh, if you want to know more information about church planning with the send network, just text the words send network to 888-123. That's send network to 888-123. Check us out at sendnetwork.com. And as always, until next time, we are send network. You have been listening to We Are Sin Network, a resource of the North American Mission Movement. For more information about today's podcast and other relevant resources, visit sendnetwork.com.